So did did you try and go to some race control? Yes. Did, you, did Eddie? No, nobody answered at all. Oh, well, they were there. Glass pims? That wouldn't be a bad idea. What would you like, Jamie? Coke. Right. Ray, what's, what's happening today? Where are we? We're at Foy for the second round in the uh, Peter Stuyvesant National Offshore Powerboat Championship. And um, we're waiting to see uh, what the weather's going to be like for the day's race. And if the conditions remain as they are at the moment, it's almost certain to be a win by a catamaran. Well, why is that? Well, the catamarans, of course, uh, are, are craft which fly over the water rather than cruise through it at high speed. Right. Ray, we've got some new boats here. Lady Aaron's boat is new, isn't it? This yes, time? Lady Aaron's boat is uh, one of the cruisers. And, of course, the cruiser class is a growing group of offshore races a day. And uh, Lady Aaron's got a boat called a Revenger, which is really an advanced cruiser in as much as it's very narrow, uh, lightweight. Uh, basic accommodation is really designed more for speed than cruising. Now, she has two large Mer cruiser engines, something like a total of 500 horsepower in that boat. Mm -hmm. And it's only about uh, 25 feet overall, so I'm sure that uh, Fiona, or the Countess of Aaron, I should call her, is uh, going to have a, a very fast ride. She, had, she is running her engines in, and the first race at Pool, she finished fourth overall, uh, but today she's hoping for an overall win. Great. Now, um, how many people in her boat besides herself? She's got uh, one other person in the boat, it's Tim Cotton, who happens to be the grandson of the band leader Billy Cotton. Oh, yes. And, uh, he has been racing for many years uh, on the scene and has been with the Countess of Arran for a couple of seasons. Yes, yes, I see. Now, anybody, who else to watch uh, in any class for this one? Well, I'm particularly interested in watching Ian Burney, who is the Britain's only world offshore uh, class champion at the moment. He won the world championship at Cowes last year, and he won the first race at Poole four weeks ago. And I feel that uh, Ian has a good chance to win today, except that he is running a monohull. And the monohull needs rougher weather than we have seen today, and I think that the catamarans could be to the advantage. Okay. And uh, any other any other forecast for the race? Well, I'm particularly interested in seeing the Class One boat, which is the new uh, Jaguar team. Uh, the unfort unfortunately, only one of the two boats in the team are here today. Uh, this is uh, Colin Jervis Brazier in Gold Rush. Now, she, this is a, a British engine developed for powerboat racing, remembering that all the power units in the sport are mainly American and I'd be interested to see whether Colin uh, lasts the 92 miles uh, because he's suffered a lot of breakdowns in the, in the course of developing those engines so that's an interesting boat to watch as well. Yes.
to the start area, and with us is Derek Lloyd, the navigator of one of the Class 1 race boats. Derek, uh, given that uh, one piece of sea looks very much like another, how do you and your fellow competitors know where the course is? Well, we've, we've been given racing instructions uh, which list the uh, course and the marks that we are going to be turning around. Uh, you must appreciate, as you've said, uh, that C is C, we haven't got roads to go down and turn right at the first set of traffic lights or do a left at the pub. So in the case of Foy, right, uh, we've got a map of the course up on the screen. Right. Uh, can you take us around it? We have two laps, one lap A, and this runs from the start line to a mark boy, which is just south of the Udder Rock mark. Um, we then do a sharp right hand or starboard turn and go up towards Fowey Estuary where there is another mark. Um, this in fact is a, card is, is a cardinal navigation buoy and we go round this, uh, round the Canis Rock Gate. There is another mark laid in the mouth of the Fowey Estuary and we then go through the start line um, of the next lap. Lap B goes down to the mark off the other rock boy again, but this time we go across the bay down to the Gwynnies Rock, uh, where we go round the navigational mark and also the rocks that are exposed um, and are a navigational hazard. The, the, the boy is there to advise people to keep away. We go round those because of the speed the boats are going would be too fast to try and cut inside and we could possibly have accidents. Up to the Canis Rock Gate, which I've described in Lap A, and again there are rocks exposed there, through the mark and over the start line for the end of that lap. We do two or three of each of these laps to make a total course of um, 90 nautical miles. Um, class 3 are doing one less lap which will m give them a total of 70 odd nautical miles. Derek, how is the start organised? Well we have a, we have a briefing and uh, the course is talked about at the briefing and um, the different class boats are separated at the start, you have a start boat which takes everybody up to a rolling start over the, fin over the finish line, start finish line and lap line. Um, the flag is dropped at this point and then um, from rolling you really start the race. Now there are quite a number of boats of course at the start, isn't it rather dangerous? Yes, um, the actual start of any powerboat race um, is quite hairy. Um, as I said, you split either side of the start boat uh, so that you're at least running down to the start line with uh, similar sized boats and engines. But uh, when you've got uh, big fields like uh, this one here, we had over 40 boats racing, um, you're narrowing down the sea and um, with the wakes the boats are bouncing, the, the drivers are trying to concentrate on um, keeping in line certainly not crossing the line of the start boat, uh, watching either side of them uh, to see that people are not getting too close. Um, you've got wakes crossing and making the sea an absolute mil uh, milestone of, uh, of water, plus other people trying to get in because they don't want to be get left behind and uh, catch all the wake and the, the spume that's thrown up when people really do th throttle and accelerate away. What is the start signal? As you cross the start line, the start boat will be carrying a um, union jack or a club flag and as they go through um, a line between the bow of the uh, committee boat and the outer um, buoy of the start line, the flag is dropped and uh, away you go.
you've seen the uh, Jaguar boat do very well today. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what, what do you see in this particular performance that you saw in this race? Well, I was delighted to see Joe's Gold Rush run the race without missing a beat. Engine, boat, hull, gearboxes. Very pleased that the first outing of the season went so well. When we uh, compete against the Americans, I'm sure we will shortly, are the top flight British boats, European boats. How do you see the Jaguar engines performing? Well, the Mer Cruiser engine, which is what we're competing against, uh, is, I feel, at its limit at around 650 horsepower. And we are fairly comfortable around the 800 horsepower mark. And I think that speaks for itself. Is there any advantages in weight in your engines? Being aluminium, it's slightly lighter. Although in a five-ton boat, 100 pounds doesn't make much difference. Now, these are turbocharged. Mm. This is the way that the engines are going these days, I understand. Uh, what, do you, what do you speed would you think you would get from the uh, Gold Rush or the Catamaran, which you're developing at the moment? Well, the, uh, the Gold Rush, I would imagine, would be capable of uh, 95 miles an hour, possibly even 100 as a bare boat. And on, in suitable conditions, we're hoping that uh, our new Catamaran uh, will be capable of speeds in excess of 110. That's very impressive. It's taken a long time to develop the Jaguar engines. What have been the main problems? Practically everything. <laughs> We've had uh, bearing problems, oil problems, uh, detonation problems, turbo problems. But one by one, I think we can lift them. That's jolly good. Well, well done, Bill. I'm hoping that we see another Jaguar success, a success of Britain, when we re-race uh, at the next meeting. Thank you, Ray. Thank you.